Hello everyone, what is up? It is me, LBMTG, and today I'm bringing you guys kind of a cool special video. This is going to be the first deck tech of Corset 2019 ever uploaded on YouTube. At least that's what my research showed me. As soon as I got the idea for this, I uh, I go ahead, I went ahead and uh, looked it up, and it uh, it seems like I'm the first one to to ever do a Corset 2019 deck tech on YouTube, which is super cool. And so today we'll be taking a look at Corset 2019 Popper Black Red Burn. Uh, you can see here we have 71 cards in total. That is because we're running a full four cards uh, that are from uh, Corset 2019. Uh, we're running full playset, and they are not currently up on uh, MTG Goldfish right now, which is where this is uh, this is currently from. So um, we'll we'll get to those once uh, once we get through those. But essentially, what we're doing with this deck tag is we're just trying to uh, unload some spells that our opponents face and deal a bunch of damage to our opponent. So we're running a whole bunch of one drops here. The basic mono red burn cards like Chain Lightning, three damage to. Uh, to any one target, usually your opponent. Lava Spike, 3 damage directly to the opponent. Lightning Bolt, 3 damage to target creature or player, most likely you're choosing player. Um, Shard Volley, same thing, 3 damage to target creature or player. This one you do have to sacrifice a land though, um, so it's a little bit worse, but still quite quite strong for us in this deck. Um, and then we're running cards like Firebrand Archer, we have two of these, it's a 2 mana 2-1, two, whenever you cast a non-creature spell it deals 1 damage to each opponent, and Thermo Alchemist, uh, it's an 0-3 defender and uh, you can tap it to deal 1 damage to each opponent, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell untap Thermo Alchemist, so what Firebrand Archer and Thermo Alchemist allow us to do is whenever we cast an instant or sorcery they're going to um, allow us to do an additional point of damage, or if we have two of them out an additional two points of damage, something like that. I personally prefer Thermo Alchemist over Firebrand Archer, that's why I have the 4-2 split in favor of Thermo Alchemist. If you like them differently, you can go ahead and switch them up, but um, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of the Thermo Alchemist. So again, like I was saying, something like Lava Spike uh, deals 3 damage to target player. If we have out a Thermo Alchemist, we can tap our Thermo Alchemist to ping our opponent for 1, cast the Lava Spike, uh, and then untap our Thermo Alchemist because of this trigger. So we're essentially doing an additional like point of damage with each of our burn spells, thanks to the Thermal Alchemist and thanks to the Firebrand Archer, and then even if we don't cast any burn spells, which is very unlikely, uh, the Thermal Alchemist can still just ping our opponent for one. When we take a look at some of the black cards in the deck, uh, you can see here Bump in the Night, which is one black for a sorcery. Target opponent loses three life, and then it has flashback for five colorless and a red. Uh, most likely we won't be flashing this back unless the game goes super, super late, um, but most of the time it'll just be one mana, three damage to the opponent, which is very nice. Uh, Tyrant's Choice is a card not a lot of people know about. Um, it's one of those weird cards from Conspiracy, and it has the Will of the Council mechanic. So starting with you, each player votes for Death or Torture. If Death gets more votes, each opponent sacrifices a creature. If torture gets more votes or the vote is tied, each opponent loses four life. So essentially, most of the time this is reading two mana, target opponent loses four life. Um, and in our case, this is essentially like Boros Charm for us. If we try and compare these cards to the modern burn deck, which has a lot of success, Tyrant's Choice is essentially our Boros Charm, two mana, four damage. Um, we are running Rift Bolt, which has the Suspend 1, so uh, most of the time we'll, we will be playing this for 1 mana, um, so it'll be another one of our 1 drops, um, but if worse comes to worse, we can just hard cast it for 3 mana, again, 3 damage to target creature or player, very nice. Um, and then when we take a look at a card like Needle Drop here, it deals 1 damage to target creature or player that was dealt damage this turn, draw a card, so it's 1 mana, cantrips, and does an additional damage, which is super nice. Notably though, not all of our cards deal damage. When we take a look at Bump of the Night, it's loss of life, not dealing damage. Tyrant's Choice, loss of life, not dealing damage, and the card from Corset 2019, uh, it's actually a card that loses life instead of dealing damage as well, but again, we'll get to that in just a second. One last card, uh, which is Blightning here, which is 3 mana, 1 colorless, 1 black, and 1 red for a sorcery. Deals 3 damage to target player. That player discards 2 cards. Lightning is a great card. 3 mana for 3 damage, not necessarily the rate that we want, but again, it is still doing a lot of damage to our opponent, which is great. Um, and then it does make the opponent discard 2 cards, which means that they have less resources to deal with our cards, which is super nice. Uh, again, like I said, 3 mana, 3 damage, not the worst rate in the world, but certainly not the best rate either. It's really the fact that it's uh, 3 mana for 3 damage, and it gives us additional value here with the discarding 2 cards, which is super strong. So when we go ahead and take a look here at the Corset 2019 spoiler, what's been happening 
is a lot of people have been finding these course or these yeah these course at 2019 cards randomly in uh, uh, Dominaria booster packs. Uh, people aren't sure why that is, whether it's just a printing error uh, on Wizards of the Coast part or whether Wizards of the Coast intentionally does this to create a little bit of hype. Um, they've been known to do this in the past with previous sets, but uh, these four cards recently got spoiled. Uh, actually, today, just a few hours ago, um, a lot of people were talking about Sky Scanner, which is uh, three colorless for a one-one Thopter flyer. Uh, whenever it enters the battlefield, draw a card. Um, people were uh, really excited about that one on Twitter, but I saw Sovereign's Bite and then knew that I had to make this deck tech. So Sovereign's Bite is one colorless and one black. Targeted player loses three life and you gain three life. So this is essentially going to be our Lightning Helix. Don't get me wrong, this is extremely, extremely worse compared to Lightning Helix. Lightning Helix is an instant and can target creatures. Sovereign's Bite can only target your opponent or, well, I guess it could target you if you wanted to target yourself for some reason, but most of the time we'll be targeting our opponent and gaining three life, so it will be doing essentially what Lightning Helix will do for a burn deck. Uh, in our case, which is just kind of helping us a little bit in uh, in race situations or in close matchups, the three life could end up becoming relevant, and then of course two mana for three damage is really nice. Um, so Sovereign's Bite is going to be a card that is printed in Corset 2019 and uh, is going to see play in this popper deck that we're creating here. Um, so in terms of lands, we're looking at four Bloodfell Caves. Uh, it comes into play tapped, gain a life, add black or red to your mana pool nine mountains as well as six swamps uh, so this has been the main deck but then we do of course have some sideboard cards here as well uh, notably the first card being duress target opponent reveals his or her hand you choose a non-creature non-land card from it that player discards that card only one of these very good against card uh, decks like the mono blue delver decks where they're running a lot of non-creature non-land cards to Electricery, one of our worst matchups is going to be Elves, because Elves can go wide and uh, do a lot of damage, so Electricery is a nice way of dealing with all of our opponent's smaller Elf creatures. Uh, the next card here we have is Nihil Spellbomb. I like Nihil Spellbomb over Relic of Progenitus in this deck because we do have a couple cards that carry about the graveyard, not a lot. Um, notably, something like Bump in the Night here uh, cares about the graveyard because it does have flashback. Um, and there's also uh, two copies of another card in our graveyard that will care about the graveyard as well. So Nihil Spellbomb gives us the option to deal with our opponent's graveyard for just one mana. If we want to draw a card, then we have the option to do that too. Um, but notably, it, uh, it it can just deal with a graveyard for one mana, which is something that Relic of Progenitus can't do. Relic of Progenitus being essentially the other card that was kind of fighting for this spot. But I think in our deck, I like Nihil Spellbomb better. It has the chance to replace itself just like Relic if we want to, but it also leaves our our own graveyard alone and just focuses on our opponent's graveyard. Then we're running three copies of Pyroblast, counter target spell if it is blue, or destroy target permanent if it is blue. Of course, we're bringing this in against the blue decks, again, mono blue delver, those kind of decks. Three copies of Smash to Smithereens, one colorless and one red for an instant, destroy target artifact, Smash to Smithereens deals three damage to that artifact's controller, so we're bringing this in against the artifact matchups like Affinity, and then notably it is just two mana for three damage in that matchup as well, so we're hindering our opponent's game plan by destroying an artifact, as well as helping our own game plan by dealing three damage to our opponent, which is super nice. Uh, then we're looking at two copies of Terminate. Uh, Terminate is essentially our only way in this deck of dealing with bigger creatures that are played in Popper, things like Ulamog's Crusher, Fangren Marauder, and Gurmag Angler. We don't really have any other way to, to deal with those kind of cards, so Terminate only comes in against those matchups, but most of the time won't necessarily be needed. Uh, we're looking at one copy then of Stagger Shock, uh, two colorless and one red for an instant, deals two damage to target creature or player, and then it has Rebound. If you cast a spell from your hand, exile it as it resolves. At the beginning of your next upkeep, you may cast this card from exile without paying its mana cost. So this is nice because it can just be three mana for two damage to finish off our opponent, or it can go ahead and just kill a creature or something like the Mono Green Stompy deck plays a lot of cards that are just like two twos for one, um, and so this will be a nice way of dealing with some of those cards. Um, and then Stagger Shock, of course, because it has Rebound, then we get to play it again, and we still have all of our mana for that turn. We don't have to pay an additional three mana to recast it, uh, so that's super, super nice. We could do something like get this off a of Rebound, two damage to our opponent, and then just cast three uh, one-mana spells um, to deal three to our opponent with each of those, and then we can do 11 damage in one turn uh, after the Stagger Shock uh, is, is coming off of the, uh, of the Rebound. 
Um, and then the final two cards we're running here in the sideboard are two copies of Gurmag Angler. Uh, this does give us another way of dealing with opposing Gurmag Anglers, but um, what, what really happens in this deck is that most people will board out the removal, especially the removal for bigger creatures, like uh, you're not going to want to keep in your Terminates and things like that against a burn deck. The only creatures we're running, we're running six of them, the two Firebrand Archers and the four Thermo Alchemists. So normally you're going to want to go a little bit smaller, you're going to want to bring in some gain life cards against us, and uh, some some cards that focus more maybe on the instants and sorceries, maybe something like a Dispel would be uh, pretty pretty decent against us, but uh, they're going to board out most of their creature removal, maybe they leave in some, but certainly not a lot, and uh, Gurmag Angler will make them pay for that. We're, we're most of the time going to win game one, we have a really good matchup in game one for most decks, um, and so in game two, again, most of them will be boarding out their removal, we bring in the Gurmag Angler, and we can steal game two with an unexpected zombie fish, um, and so we can go ahead and take down the entire match just like that. So again, this has been, uh, thanks to Sovereign's Bite, this has been a Corset 2019 deck tech two months before Corset 2019 officially releases. Uh, this is super cool that Wizards occasionally does this. Whether it's an accident or whether it's on purpose, I love that we get these random uh, common and uncommon or just random cards here. Sovereign's Bite here um, being used in this deck and then Sky Scanner being a card that a lot of people on Twitter were really happy about. So this has been the deck tech. Uh, notably, if we go ahead and take a look at this online, if you guys take out the three copies of Pyroblast and replace them with some other card that, you know, maybe you don't care as much about the mono blue Delver matchup and you just want to make the deck more budget, uh, then this whole deck could cost less than, like, five tickets for you guys, maybe even less than four tickets for you guys, so it's super, super budget. Um, and, it, and all you have to do is really bring out the Pyroblast, but the Pyroblast are just so, so strong against the mono blue Delver matchup, so I really like the Pyroblast, but if you're looking for a strictly budget version, then uh, take out the Pyroblast. It'll save you 13 tickets for your for your online deck. Um, but nonetheless, this has been Corset 2019 Popper Black Red Burn. Uh, hopefully you guys did enjoy the video. If this is your first time seeing content from me, of course, a subscription would be appreciated. Of course, a like and a comment would be appreciated as well. Let me know what you're thinking about the deck. Download in the comments below and tell me if you're excited for Corset 2019 because I know after seeing these kind of cards, I know they're just, you know, innocuous commons, but it's got me kind of excited, uh, excited enough to make this video. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching the video, and I will see you guys here tomorrow for yet another Magic the Gathering video.